Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis, and in this quick video, I want to share with you what I think are five really handy tips when using Photoshop. Okay, so this first tip is all to do with an update that came to the new document interface. If I just show you what we've got now with this recent update, if we go to File and New, we're presented with this new interface here where we have settings over on the right hand side and in the main work area we've got lots of custom presets for sizes of documents we might want to start working on. We've also got settings across the top for photo, print, art and illustration, web, mobile, film and video. However, we all love updates and enhancements, but sometimes there are those updates we wish were left well alone. And this is one of those ones for me. I much preferred the older style new document interface. If you're like me and you wish that the older style one was still available, you can still get it. It's very easy to do that. If we just close this down, we're going to go to the Photoshop and then Preferences menu and the General tab. If you're using Windows, just go to the Edit menu, then Preferences. Once you're in the General tab, over on the left hand side column here, we've got a little checkbox that says Use Legacy New Document Interface. If we tick that checkbox, then click OK. From now on, when we go to create a new document, we're presented with the interface that you're more than likely used to seeing if you're a regular user of Photoshop. And I much prefer this particular one. Now this next tip covers Quick Mask, and this is something that I show in quite a few videos on YouTube where I'm showing how I use it to make a selection of eyes to then enhance them. I've had a few emails of people saying it doesn't work, so I thought I'd quickly show you what you need to do to make sure that you have no problems. So let's just start it off first of all by going into Quick Mask. I'm going to press B to get the brush tool and then Q to enter Quick Mask. And what we normally see is that you can then use the brush to paint over an area that you want to select, or so you think, because Adobe have got it set up in a different way. Now that I'm actually painted over the eyes, you see this red overlay, so it's clearly showing where I've just painted. I then come out of Quick Mask by pressing Q, and we see the marching and selection, something you would expect to see when you're making a selection. Now though, if I zoom out, we can see that there are marching ants also around the outside of the image. So basically what this means is I haven't selected the eyes, I've actually told Photoshop I don't want to select them. And I find this quite a confusing way to work. I much prefer to use Quick Mask in a way that wherever I paint is what I want to select. But it's very easy to set this up. So let's just close down this selection and I'll show you what you need to do. Let's zoom back in. Over in the toolbar on the left hand side, you've got the quick mask icon. If you double click on that icon, you then bring up the quick mask options. And you can see by default, masked areas is turned on. So this is basically meaning wherever you paint, you are masking out. But we want it to be that wherever we paint is where we're selecting. All we need to do is turn on the selected areas checkbox and then click OK. So from now on, whenever we use quick mask, we paint and we see this red overlay just as before. So just paint this other eye in. We then come out of Quick Mask by pressing Q. We see the marching ants. However, this time when we zoom out, the marching ants are nowhere else other than around the eyes. So we've now got it set up so that when we use Quick Mask, where we paint is where we want to have selected. Now one of the commands I use a lot in Photoshop is the place embedded command. It's found in the file menu, just under halfway down here. Yours may just say place, it all depends what version of Photoshop you're working on. But if we click on this, what it allows us to do is to navigate to a file on our computer, click on it, click on place, and it brings it into the image we're currently working on as a new layer, and it also has the transform handles around it. So we can then, in this example here, click on the transform handles, drag it out so it fills the canvas, and then press enter or return. Now, the reason I've brought this texture into this picture is because I want to use it by adding a blend mode and giving a texture onto the gray background around the soldier. However, what I need to do first of all is to desaturate it. So let's just go to the image menu, adjustments and desaturate. But what you'll notice is I can't use the desaturate, it's actually grayed out. And there are several other commands here that I can't use as well. This is because when we use the place command, it brings the layer in as a smart object. And you can see that now over on the right hand side with a little icon in the bottom right hand corner of the thumbnail. So if I want to desaturate it, what I need to do is rasterize the layer or turn the layer into a normal layer. We can do this a couple of ways over in the layers panel, right click just to the right hand side of the name of the layer and choose rasterize layer 
or just go to the layer menu, choose rasterize and then layer. However, most of the time when I use the place command, I don't really want that layer to be a smart object. So I set Photoshop up in a slightly different way. All I do is go to the Preferences menu. So again, we go to the Photoshop menu, Preferences and General. If you're using Windows, go to the Edit menu, then Preferences and General. Click on the General tab here. Over on the right-hand column, there's a little checkbox that says Always Create Smart Objects When Placing. If I untick that, then click OK. Let's just delete that layer. Then I'm now going to go and start using the Place command or Place Embedded. Navigate to a file like that texture that I want to bring in. Click on Place and we can see that it brings it in just like before. It's a new layer, it's got the transform handles, but now if we look over in the layers panel, over on the right hand side, this layer is a normal layer. No need to rasterize it, it's no longer being brought in as a smart object, which means I can then go to image, adjustments, and desaturate, or indeed use the keyboard shortcut. But it's now allowing me to do that, it's no longer a smart object. So carrying on from the previous tip, now that we've got the texture in and it's been desaturated, let's just change the blend mode from normal to overlay to add it onto that gray background. But now obviously we have it all over the picture, not just on the background, but also on the soldier. So let's just add a layer mask and then we get a brush, a black brush to paint it off the soldier or anywhere else that we don't want it to appear. And this is where the tip's gonna be. We're currently using layer mask. I'm, you can see now that I'm removing that texture off the soldier just here. I might just leave it on the table and uh, some of the objects on the table as well, like so. But the tip here is being able to see exactly where you've painted on your layer mask so that you don't miss bits out. When we're doing it just like this, it can be a little bit difficult. However, if you press the backslash key on your keyboard, you get this red overlay. So that now shows us exactly where we've painted. And I actually can continue to paint in black to remove the texture off everywhere else like so. And when I'm happy, I'll just press the backslash key to go back to the normal view and carry on doing my retouching. Now, when I first started using Photoshop, and especially when I got my first Wacom tablet, I don't know how, but completely by accident, I would end up rotating my picture, and I never knew how to get it back to normal. So this tip is to show you how you can do that, and it's really, really simple. All you need to do is come over to the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, choose the Rotate View tool, and then just double-click on the icon in the toolbar. So we've got the Rotate View tool, double-click on the icon, and it brings our image back to being nice and straight and normal. Now, I thought I'd just throw one extra tip in here, one extra little bonus tip, and that's to do with Select and Mask, which is the update to Refine Edge that came recently in Adobe Photoshop CC 2017. Now, you may have seen videos from friends of mine like Colin Smith, who runs Photoshop Cafe, or Jesus Ramirez, who runs the Photoshop training channel, who show you how you can actually bring back good old Refine Edge. And indeed, I've also included that in an earlier video. However, I have been contacted by a few people who said they still cannot get it to work. And I think I really do know the answer as to why that is. Now, at the moment, you can see this deer stag on the screen. The videos that I've shown and Colin and Jesus have shown is where to get Refine Edge back, all you need to do is go to the Select menu and choose Select and Mask. But before you click on it, hold down the Shift key and then click on Select and Mask. However, what you'll see happening, is, which is what these people are experiencing, is it's still bringing in the new updated Select and Mask uh, interface. So let's just cancel out of that. Now, the thing that you need to do to make sure that you can bring old Refine Edge back is you have to have an active selection before you try to enter it. And that's always been the case when we were using Refine Edge in earlier versions of Photoshop. So let me just load a selection that I made earlier on. Here we can see now we've got the marching ants going around the deer stag. Now then, when I go to the Select menu, I'm now going to hold down my Shift key and then click on Select and Mask. And because I've got the active selection, good old Refine Edge appears. So that is it. If you're finding that you can't get Refine Edge back, even though you're holding down the Shift key, make sure that you have an active selection. So there you go. That's just five quick handy tips for you when using Photoshop. If you like the video, make sure you click on that little like button there. And also, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button. That's just a great way of showing some support for the channel and also letting me know that you're out there. But of course, if you think you know somebody who's also going to be interested in this and all the other free videos I have on my YouTube channel, 
please make sure that you share it with them as well. Share the video, share the link to the YouTube channel, and I'd really, really appreciate it. But that's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.